In this lesson, we will discuss solving one nonlinear algebraic equation using the newton raphson method. Here we have some function f of x that we want to find the root for. We start with an initial guess of the root x0 and calculate f evaluated at x0. Unless we were very lucky, x0 will not be the actual root. If we want to find the value of the function at some distance delta x away from x0, we could use a Taylor series expansion about x0. f evaluated at x0 plus delta x equals f evaluated at x0 plus delta x times the first derivative of f evaluated at x0 plus an infinite number of higher order terms such as delta x squared over 2 times the second derivative of f evaluated at x0. If delta x is the distance from x0 to the root, then f evaluated at x0 plus delta x is the value of the function at the root, which is 0. So if we could solve this equation for delta x, we would know the exact distance from the current position x0 to the root. Unfortunately, since there are an infinite number of terms in the Taylor series expansion, this is not possible. To simplify the equation, we will employ a linear approximation to the Taylor series, discarding terms with delta x squared and higher. Although this is a crude approximation when delta x is large, the approximation usually becomes better as we get closer to the root since delta x becomes smaller. Graphically what we've done is approximate the actual function as a straight line that starts at f evaluated at x0, has a slope of f prime evaluated at x0, and terminates at some point on the x-axis, which we will call x1. So delta x is no longer the distance between x0 and the actual root, but rather the distance between x0 and the root estimate x1. We replace delta x with x1 minus x0 in the Taylor series approximation and solve for x1, which is now the new root estimate. x1 equals x0 minus f evaluated at x0 divided by f prime evaluated at x0. This relationship allows us to calculate a new root estimate using the value of the current root estimate. If we use i to represent the current root estimate and i plus 1 to represent the next root estimate, we can generalize this equation as xi plus 1 equals xi minus the function evaluated at xi divided by the first derivative evaluated at xi. This is the general equation for the newton raphson method. We can use this equation to find the next root estimate x2, which is x1 minus the function evaluated at x1 divided by f prime evaluated at x1. Graphically, we are starting at f evaluated at x1 and following the slope f prime evaluated at x1 down to the x-axis where we reach x2. Delta x is the difference between the next root estimate x2 and the current root estimate x1. We iterate on this equation until the percent difference between the next root estimate and the current root estimate is less than some small value epsilon, which is set by the user. The newton raphson method has some pitfalls that occasionally cause the algorithm to fail to find a root. The first pitfall involves division by zero. Let's say we want to find the root for the function x cubed minus 0.3 using the newton raphson method. This requires us to choose an initial value for the root and determine the expression for the first derivative. Let's select 0 as our initial value, and the expression for the derivative is 3 times x squared. At x equals 0, the value of the function is negative 0.3 and the value of the first derivative is 0. Since the first derivative appears in the denominator of the newton raphson equation, the next root estimate is infinity. Graphically, the reason this occurs is because a first derivative equal to zero represents a horizontal line which will never cross the x-axis. We made an unfortunate choice for the initial guess for x. Division by zero is possible any time you have a root estimate which yields a first derivative equal to zero. So let's try a slightly different initial guess for the root and set x not equal to 0.1. The value of the function is negative 0.299 and the value of the first derivative is positive 0 0.03. Since the slope is non-zero, it will eventually cross the x-axis. However, the slope is very small, and the next root estimate will be quite far from the actual root. 
Plugging these three values into the newton raphson equation gives us 10.07 for the next root estimate. The corresponding value of the function is positive 1020.8, and the first derivative is positive 304.2. This gives a next root estimate of 6.714. The corresponding value of the function is 302.4, and the first derivative is positive 135.2. This makes the next root estimate 4.478. The corresponding value of the function is positive 89.50, and the first derivative is positive 60.16. The next root estimate is 2.99, and it appears that we are converging back to the actual root. Eventually we would find that the root is approximately 0.669433. Our unfortunate poor choice of an initial value resulted in us taking many iterations to find the approximate solution, so slow convergence is the second pitfall of the newton raphson method. If we chose a better initial guess for the root, say 1.1 instead of 0.1, we would have converged to the root much faster. Conversely, we could have selected a worse value for the initial guess, such as 0 0.001, which would have resulted in much slower convergence. The third pitfall of the newton raphson method is that the root estimates might oscillate around a local minimum or maximum. For example, here we have a function with a local minimum to the left of the root. We select an initial guess for x0, which is to the left of the minimum, and follow the slope at x0 until we reach x1. x1 is also to the left of the minimum, and we follow the slope at x1 until we reach x2, which brings us to the right of the minimum. When we follow the slope at x2 to reach x3, we return back to the left side of the minimum. We will continue oscillating about this local minimum for a very long time, unless we get lucky and land on a root estimate that results in a very low slope and moves us far away from the minimum. In order to prevent infinite loops, it is a good idea to terminate the program after a certain number of iterations. The fourth pitfall of the newton raphson method is the possibility of diversions which occurs when each iteration takes us farther away from the root. For example, here we have a function that has a low slope far to the left of the root and far to the right of the root. We select an initial root estimate to the left of the actual root in an area with a low slope. We follow the slope to the next root estimate, which is farther away from the root than the initial guess. Repeating this process, we find that each iteration causes us to diverge farther and farther from the actual root. In order to identify situations where divergence occurs, you may want to terminate a program in which the root estimate exceeds a certain very large value. The advantages of using the newton raphson method is that it has the ability to converge to a solution much faster than the bisection method. Additionally, you do not need to specify an upper and lower bound of the root. Instead, you provide a single initial guess for the root. The disadvantages of the newton raphson method include the four pitfalls discussed earlier and the need to determine the expression for the first derivative. For most functions, it is not difficult to obtain this expression. However, for a very complicated function, it may take a while to determine this expression, and it can be computationally expensive to calculate it.